Today, we counter flash the chimney cricket. I have it temporarily flashed with this foil tape that's got a rubberized asphalt maybe, rubberized bitumen, I don't know what they call it, coating on the back. And we've had some good rain in the past few days and there are no leaks so far. So at least for a temporary fix, this kind of flashing works. But before I get into the counter flashing, I wanted to show you a little closer up the flashing itself. So before I started the shingles going up the cricket here, I put a piece of step flashing underneath it all, a little proud of the corner here to make sure that any water that gets back under these shingles here ends up hitting that flashing and getting kicked out. Now what counter flashing is, is actually flashing that goes on top of flashing. So it's like a second layer of flashing. So all this and this temporary stick on flashing is gonna be covered up by a layer of stepped counter flashing that's actually gonna be embedded in the mortar if I do this right. You can see there's a piece of step underneath each shingle and it goes up to the next shingle so that any water that gets back here around the edge of the shingle hits this flashing and comes back on top of the next shingle. All the water that gets underneath, you try to have a method to bring it back out to the top of the shingles. Sort of like redundant safety measures. First thing I'm gonna do to get my counter flashing ready is measure the length of one of these slopes here and cut a piece of flashing that's a little bit bigger than that just to start with and then we'll trim it down to how we need it to be. Now, you can't use aluminum flashing. I know aluminum is really common and popular and is easy to find in Home Depot and stuff like that. And that's great for doing siding to roofing applications and stuff like that. But when you're doing it up against masonry, aluminum reacts with the alkalis in mortar. And it actually creates bubbles. And not only does it oxidize the aluminum, but it deteriorates the mortar as well. So. When you're working with flashing that's gonna be embedded in mortar, you either have to use lead, copper, stainless steel, or galvanized steel. And what we're going with is galvanized because it's easy to find and it's cheaper. And it will last as long as this roof will last. Around here where I live, most chimney flashing is done. Well, you can see a couple of chimneys over here. They basically lay the flashing against the chimney and just goop roofing cement or some sort of silicone or probably a polyurethane, rubberized, whatever, sealant. They put some sort of sealant around the flashing and just call it a day. What I found in doing some research, in England they do this step flashing first, which they call these soakers instead of step flashing. And then over this, they do their counter flashing. And the counter flashing is actually sheets of flashing that are embedded in the mortar joints and then they have a little angle cut on them too and we're going to try to to do that and modify it just a little bit so i'm going to call this a hybrid counter flashing approach i don't know if anybody's done this before i'm sure somebody's done this maybe lots of people have done this but i can't find anything where they actually use galvanized flashing to do this technique but that's what we're going to use today And you're gonna wanna wear gloves when working with this stuff because it can cut you up. Seven and a half inches.
Now whatever I do, I don't want to cut below that line because that has to stay pristine so that it keeps the water away from the under flashing there. Now that I got that line, I'm going to draw lines across the bottom of my mortar joints on the flashing all the way to this water line. Alright, now we're gonna take all these marks we made. Did I tell you I live right next to an airport and people do touch and goes all day on Saturday? Uh, this is the top of the chimney up this way. So three quarters of an inch above each of these lines, we're gonna make another parallel line. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. And this mark right here is where the edge of the chimney goes. So this would end up wrapping around the bottom of the chimney. All right, next we're gonna make a line for where we're gonna back cut all these. I'm actually just gonna use my speed squared. And these are from the bottom lines. So actually from the mortar joint, the bottom of the mortar joint lines that we made. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the top line all the way across and then we're going to cut the top of these lines only to where we reach the bottom of the bevel. Wait a second, I did that wrong. You actually want to cut these all the way through to the bottom line, just this part. Sorry about that. Now what we're gonna do from this cut to this line, we're gonna bend on this line. So all these lines from here get bent. And for this, you might wanna use these seamers So I'll totally bend the top line to start with. And I'm not bending to like a full 90 right now. I'm just bending to maybe a 45. That way when we embed this in the mortar, if any water gets behind it, it'll still run down. go back and mark my mortar joints where we're gonna need to take out some mortar so here to here now I want to come back with a grinder and a diamond blade or a plugging chisel and I want to remove all the mortar between the lines I just made where the flashing is going to tuck into the mortar.
going to save some of those little bits of mortar to use as wedges and you'll see how that works in just a little while. So what I'm going to do here on this bottom corner is I'm going to snip it right here and wrap this around and I'm going to cut down from this pretty much straight down and what will happen is this will wrap around this edge and overlap this flashing down here. I'm just going to aim for the corner and we can adjust this cut later but it also means I need to cut out the mortar from this side. Before I actually put the side flashing on, I'm gonna make a little piece for the peak of the chimney cricket to go underneath that. so it doesn't stick out above the counter flashing. Should have waited on that till I did the other side. It sound right, boy. All right, the moment of truth. Now it's time to go mix up some mortar. First, I'm gonna dampen the joints a little bit to make sure the mortar bonds really good.
And I just bought um, prepackaged mortar. Just follow the instructions on the, the bag and you should be okay. I'm just gonna start by putting some mortar in the joints and then we'll bed the flashing into it and then touch up the mortar and add more if we need to. sound right boy and mortar likes to stick to wet brick so I probably should have let these dry a little Gonna try to get it in the bottom of the joint. pushing on the flashing with the trowel as I push this in so that the mortar actually acts as a wedge.
Well, aside from going back with some alcohol and trying to get the uh, Sharpie marker off there, which, you know, nobody can see it back here anyway, I think that's pretty done. See a crack forming here. Just keep that in tight. All right, now let me tell you all the things I am pretty sure I did wrong, but Regardless, it's still watertight, so if you do what I did, it's going to work. There's a dis disclaimer there telling you I'm a DIY guy and I don't really know what I'm doing, but it should work in theory. Oh, also, you'll notice I jumped one of the uh, joints here because it wasn't really necessary to go inside that joint because the water will run down the edge of this and carry to the next joint regardless of, you know, if you hit every brick but I was just experimenting with that and the reason I did that is because I thought and wrongly so I thought if I cut back here you might end up seeing the flashing from this side where it comes through so I thought oh that'll cover that up over there there's a little mortar behind there but come back and wipe this off with a sponge again anyway so what I did wrong is I should have overlapped these shingles over those, maybe. You know, it depends. They say the bigger roof should overlap the smaller roof, unless the smaller roof has a steeper pitch. Well, this smaller roof does have a steeper pitch, but it isn't a roof, it's just a chimney cricket. And it probably should have been beneath this roof over here. But as you saw, when we roofed it, this roof goes way up under there, so that anything coming down there, there's, there's two roofs, basically for at least six inches under there protecting it all. So nothing should leak in that valley. Another thing is, let me get my shadow out of here, cutting the valleys. The proper way, there's actually a couple of proper ways to do it, or better ways. You use a hooked utility knife blade, and that, when you even when you run it from the top, it's basically cutting from the bottom, so it slices through these architectural shingles better. But another way to do it is to use tin snips, like the red tin snips that I was using. I guess you could use any tin snips and actually scissor the joint. And this is another better way to do this. They recommend before you lay these shingles, whichever shingles you lay on top of the cut joint, you go ahead and run your bead of black cement. So underneath all these right here, I should have run a big bead of roofing cement right before I laid them. What else? I gotta, still got to go back and patch this shingle in I missed here. That's not going to be fun, but you don't need to see that on camera. What else? I'm happy with it. it. I mean, it has been raining. You can see. Well, I hope you can see. Just trust me. It, it rained yesterday. It's been raining a few days. However, I'm not a professional. 
I'm a DIYer and what I do is I research stuff on the internet just like you're probably doing right now and after I get what I think is enough knowledge about a task I go to it. I sort of do my projects with all this research in mind and then as I'm doing them I see if I can come up with something better or I just kind of do it my own way. Oh another thing is I would really have liked to wrap around this corner with flashing that was at least say four inches or so maybe at least to the the first brick joint here but um, that's not the way it worked out it still should do okay all this is flashed back up under here and after all this cures I'm gonna get the, bend this flashing in tighter and I might just run after I get it flushed up I might run a bead of sealant along there but I really don't think I am going to because even if rain blows up under there it's going to catch that other flashing and be brought back out again let me show you the difference in these two roofs here so you can see how i shingled this and how i got that how i got the ridge shingles up under those so you know it flows off the roof that way but here is how they did my sun porch roof so you can see there's a nice neat cut there i guess this this last ridge shingle, if it's the last ridge shingle, goes way up under there. And then that's that shingle is cut around it. And you can see they cut this roof on top of this roof. The exact opposite of what I did over there. If anybody has any ways to do it better, which I'm sure you do, please add that to the comments. Because people learn just as much from the comments as they do from watching the videos. And correct me on anything that I've really botched up here or tell me if you think it'll be watertight I certainly hope so